Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and today we're going to be talking about a bevy of game development subjects. Actually, no, we're going to be talking about exactly one game development subject, and that is bevy. What the heck is a bevy? Well, bevy is a refreshingly simple, data-driven game engine built in Rust. It is free and open source forever. Now, I'm not pulling that out of my butt. That literally was just read off the screen. What it is is probably the most popular game development framework in the world of Rust programming. There is bevy as well as as Firefox. Uh, Firefox is more focused on the editor side of things. Bevy doesn't actually have an editor, so it's more of a game framework than a game engine yet, but there is an editor being developed, and a lot of the systems behind Bevy are leaning towards that future graphics uh, front end that will be created for it. It's available for Windows, Mac, Linux, Web, iOS, and Android. Full UI layer built on top of it. Uh, full ECS-based support. Entirely open source. It is a very uh, mature project. I would say that this is the biggest game development project in the Rust ecosystem. I don't think there's any argument there. Probably the most contributors and activity behind it. And the reason why we're talking about it today is because Bevy 0.16 was just released. Now, one of the things I really like about Bevy is just how easy it is actually to get started with it. This is just the joy of Rust, especially when you come from the world of C++. The, the whole build system in Rust, uh, the uh, creates package creates package system. It just makes it really nice and easy to work with. So if you want to go ahead and get started with it, you're seeing everything you need to know here. The only thing that I haven't done on camera right now is actually install the um, you know Rust compiler chain, which it, you know you're gonna want to install Rust and Cargo before this. Uh, but that's all you need to do. So once you've done that, I've cloned it down. So we go into our directory called Bevy, and the nice thing about Bevy is it ships with an absolute ton of examples. We're gonna show you one of the brand new examples of Bevy 0.16, uh, and this is also the build progress. So what you do is Cargo like so. So what you're gonna notice if I go here into the directory we are in. There's a bunch of files in there called Tomo files, and the big one here is Cargo. Now, this is telling, uh, it's kind of like a build project file that's telling it all kinds of instructions on what to do. So we use the Cargo uh, package manager or build manager. So Cargo uh, run dash dash example, like so, and then we'll give it the name of an example. Now, the new one that we're going to run is called Atmosphere. Uh, this is for atmospheric scattering, which was added in Bevy.0116. Uh, uh, I actually added one there, didn't I? 0 16. Uh, you're going to notice here, this is basically the process of building in Bevy. You're going to notice down here, uh, build process is uh, is nice and uh, nice and speedy. So you can see here, um, yeah, I, I can just let this run in real time. So even though we got 452 items here, it will run through them pretty fast. The last couple are getting a lot bigger, so they're going to take a little bit more time. But again, the tool chain, the build systems, they all tend to be pretty responsive. And all of Bevy is pretty uh, self-contained. It resolves itself. You don't have to figure out any dependencies or anything like that. You literally just have to install the build tool chain, clone the repository, and then run one of the commands I just showed you. There's a ton of examples that come with Bevy as well. It makes for a great way to to learn it. So when I ultimately do jump in, I've, I've played around with it a little bit in the past, but when it comes to actually learning it, the examples are going to be your, your North Star. They're, they're a wonderful learning resource there. So uh, we are basically done. Again, I think this last couple are going to take just a couple seconds too long. So I'm going to just pause. All right, there we go. So ironically enough, the last 10 or 15 actually take as much time as the first 450. Uh, I think it's just a matter of that they have dependencies on all the stuff that came earlier, so they're bigger and more complicated or whatever. But here we go. So this is our new demo here. This is showing atmospheric rendering inside of Bevy. So you now have atmospheric scattering and so on. But this gives you an idea of what the Bevy process is like. And again, this is one of the highlights of the new uh, Bevy uh, 0.16 release here is the atmospheric scattering that you've got going on here. So there's a lot of graphics features in Bevy. Now, if you want to get started with Bevy, probably one of the easiest things to do is come back here in your examples. So basically, we could just run the same command as before. So cargo run example. And then we just won't give it one. And what you're going to notice here is a huge list of the various different examples that are available for Bevy. There's a ton of them. If you're going to learn Bevy, this is where you're going to want to start. Let's start with something really simple, the 3D scene. This will showcase just basically a very simple 3D scene. So let's go cargo run example 3D underscore scene like so. Now you're going to notice on subsequent builds much faster because it literally only has to build uh, the one unchanged. All the, all the Bevy dependencies have already been built. So you can see a very simple 3D scene. We've got this plane that we're building on top of. Uh, then we've got our, our object in it and we've got a camera looking at it. So this is kind of as close as you're going to get to a Hello World example out there. So what you're going to find, go here, um, you're going to notice 
And let's just go into the examples. So in the example directory here, and let's just open the entire thing up. You get an idea of just how many examples they have. So there are just a ton of them. So here, all these little subdirectories. That one we've got, that was in the 3D folder. Each one of these is a different runnable example. And what we just looked at, so the earlier one we looked at, for example, the atmosphere. Here is the atmospheric scattering. This is the source code behind that. But let's start off with something much simpler. So here is 3D, uh, no, not shapes, scene. So this is that 3D scene we were just looking at. And this gives you a pretty good idea of what code looks like in the land of Bevy. So again, everything is systems driven. It is using an entity component system approach. So most of the things making up your world or your game are entities. The things that do stuff to them are systems uh, and entities are more or less. And then you're not supposed to say containers for um, components, but that's pretty much what they are. So what you're going to see here is we created a new system called startup and we passed in setup. Setup, you'll see right here is this function right there. In our setup, we were doing some spawning, including we were creating this circle. That was the platform that we drew on and then rotate, uh, positioning it in the world. Here, we're creating a uh, cube and then basically positioning it in the world. Here we create a light position in the world, and here we spawn. And that's it. That's kind of what your typical hello world looks like in the world of Bevy. Again, I like the look of the code. I just never really figured out the specifics of Rust. Um, I've played around with it a few times, but I haven't got into it as much as I'd like. So again, at the heart of all this is this data-driven approach, but you're going to find from those examples I mentioned earlier on, there are a ton of them. Like, just to give you an idea, you can run them in the browser, by the way, too, at least the majority of them in the browser. So you got things like 3D animation, scene loading, file loading. Uh, we even have full games in here. So let's come and find G, games. So you've got full games that'll walk you through. So again, you could do a breakout clone is completely implemented here as well. So there's uh, a huge number of uh, demonstrations or full examples to get you up and running. That's probably where you want to start things off. So now we're going to get into Bevy 016. So what is new and exciting in this particular release? Well, let's go take a quick look. So uh, we have 261 contributors to this release, 100 and sorry, 1,244 uh, 1, pull requests there. Uh, there is a good size community working on Bevy. So these updates are are always pretty substantial. By the way, if you are coming from 15 to 16, you will find there is a migration guide available. And we're gonna focus on pretty much these items right here. So I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail on each one of these, but give you a bit of an overview of what they are about. First one we have is GPU driven rendering. If you wanna learn more specifically about what GPU driven, uh, driven rendering is all about, they do go into details of how it all works here. But what you can think of it for now is it's, it's an optimization uh, for how GPU rendering is done. You can see this also builds on top of virtual geometry, which is sort of like think of Unreal Engine Nanite for like hyper, me hyper dense meshes. Um, that was implemented in Bevy 0.15. Uh, so this builds on top of that work. This is using the Caldera scene, which is an open source uh, high definition version of a Call of Duty Warzone map. Uh, and you're gonna see the ramifications of GPU driven rendering here, three times set better than Bevy 15. So this mesh hyper dense level, uh, you see performance on a 4090 on Vulkan on Linux. It runs at 101 frames per second versus 30 frames per second. So definitely uh, some advantages to GPU driven rendering there on the performance of large and dense mesh meshes, um, but there are also some downsides, specifically Windows, Vulkan, Linux, Vulkan. And you're going to notice uh, otherwise you've got some limitations on what they're all about. Although there is some mention about Direct3D12 in their, what they're working on. So Direct3D12 work graphs for some interest to see if they can be implemented there now. But if you're not using Vulkan on your back end, this is probably not something you want to play with right now. So on top of that, we also have procedural atmospheric scattering. This is a demo we looked at earlier on. It's a way of like, simulating sunset, sunrises, dynamic day, night, light cycles. We saw the example, so I'm not going to go into it too much, but there is a new example here showing you atmosphere in action. And here you can see the process of adding an atmosphere in. Uh, we also had decals or decals, a number of changes there. Um, these could basically, the most famous thing is for doing things like bullet holes or such on surfaces. This is not a texture map. This is a kind of think of it more like virtual stickers. They have two new ways of implementing them, forward decals, as well as cluster decals. Details of what, what the difference between those two is, is fully available here. They also have new experimental occlusion culling. Occlusion culling is all about not drawing something that you can't see. 
So uh, if you have a scene full of stuff, the less you have to draw, the faster it's going to run. And occlusion calling is a way of basically anything that is occluded, which is a way of saying that you can't see. So for example, if you cover your eye with your hand, you are occluding your eye. That's basically what the, that word means. Occlusion calling is basically saying anything that you can't see, or specifically the game camera can't see, you don't have to render. Bevy currently has an optional depth prepass, which is a simple version of this. Now they've added a modern two-phase occlusion calling um, approach. Again, more details of it there, but this was developed for their virtual geometry rendering system in dot 15 and has been expanded upon it. Uh, it won't be faster on all screens, small screens, or those using simpler non-PBR rendering are particularly likely to be slower with it. So it's not just a silver bullet thing. Uh, but if you have a complex scene, which again would be why they did it for part of the virtual geometry implementation, you might get performance out of it. Again, though, experimental. That is a key word to be aware of. And then we also have anamorphic bloom. It's kind of like a it's really kind of a recreation of a bloom system that's very common in the world of like cyberpunk or sci-fi. It's kind of a squished bloom, like a scaled down bloom. You can see the effect of it right here. So it's going to be a little bit of a niche effect, but if you're working on that kind of approach, they do have a bloom option available there as well. And again, at the heart of Bevy, is ECS, ECS standing for Entity Component System. Your world is made up of entities, those entities contain components and they are operated on, or the things that do stuff in your world are the systems. It's just a way of abstracting and understanding and organizing your code and your data, etc. It's very key to how Bevy is set up. So they've got some improvement to how these things are implemented. One of those challenges is generally in relationships. So setting up ECS systems makes a lot of sense, but then when you start getting entity to entity relationships, that's where it can start getting tricky. And they've implemented some neat new stuff there. So you see here, liked by, likes. So you can just define how well your objects get along. So we got some new ones in here, um, such as child of relationship and child relationship target and so on. So they've improved how you can define relationships between entities. On top of that, they also improved their spawning API. We saw spawn examples in both of the code examples I showed earlier on. Here is how it currently looks. Here is the new cleaner syntax. So you can see definitely uh, going to... Um, uh, clean your code up quite a bit if you're using spawning. And there you see again, before and after. So um, the new approach should definitely uh, cause cleaner, nicer, easier to handle code. On the ECS side of things, again, we also have uh, new unified ECS error handling added. Uh, and then one of the neatest new things here is this new standard support. The way I kind of understand this was we sort of like, let's say you were building for like a C++ type language that wasn't so cross compliant, wasn't implemented on so many platforms. So what you want to do is, is not necessarily stay, like depend on your core libraries, your standard libraries, or your core CLR in the world of .NET. And this is sort of a way of saying that in the world of Rust. So they implemented no standard support, which means that you don't require the standard libraries. So it's shown that Bevy working on bare metal desktops, embedded devices, and even retro consoles such as the Game Boy Advance. So it's taken away a lot of the dependencies that made it harder to run these programs cross-platform. So there's new implementation there, details of how they did it and what's involved and all of that uh, are here. Uh, but it's a neat milestone. You'll be able to uh, bring it to more platforms for Bevy in the future. So that's a neat implementation there. Uh, we got faster transform propagation as well. We now have specular tints and maps available. Uh, though I don't know that they added an example for this. Uh, and then they also have, again, there's that keyword experimental Wessel support. Now Wessel is a shading language, a modern shading lang shader language built for simplicity. So there is WGSL, which is currently what they use. Uh, Wessel is going forward. So it not only includes conditional compiling and importing between files, it's also growing to support generics, package managers, and more. It's important to note that Wessel is still relatively early in development and not all features are fully functional yet, nor are all its features fully supported in Bevy yet. But for shaders, uh, Wessel is being supported, but it again, experimental, one of those things to be aware of. And then improvements to the virtual geometry system that were added in Bevy 0 0.15, uh, immutable components, entity cloning, uh, and I think we're getting near to the bottom. And then we also have now have UI support for text shadows uh, and then various other improvements here as well. There's a ton more to it, uh, but we're not gonna get into the weeds of everything else that's here. Uh, I think we hit most of the major highlights. By the way, if you happen to have been the person that worked on the things that I just skipped over, <laughs> don't take it personally. It's for brevity of the video, which is already probably too long. All right, they also kind of talk about some of the things that they are working on going forward. Again, improvements to their relationships and their APIs uh, that are involved. And then somewhere behind the scenes, uh, there's still editor work going on as well. At least I hope there is. So ladies and gentlemen, that 
is Bevy, and specifically Bevy 0.16. If you are looking for a framework for developing games, you are using Rust, and you do not need an editor like Unity-esque editor, definitely want to go ahead and check out Bevy. Uh, it's improving very rapidly. And again, ton of examples available for you out there. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.